Welcome to BU TV 10's One on One. Today we're honored to have with us distinguished director and BU alum Jennifer Getzinger. Jennifer is in Boston to promote her newest project, The Big C, and to speak with Boston University film and TV students about her experiences in the industry since she graduated in 1990. Her professional trajectory is quite impressive. Jennifer started out as a script supervisor and worked her way up to directing seven episodes of Mad Men, two of which were nominated for Directors Guild Awards. Jennifer, it's a great pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you. It's great to be here. So after graduating from BU, you, be you had a few jobs and then you became a script supervisor. Could you tell us how you emerged into the industry? Um, yeah, I, uh, I'd done some assisting work in post-production and uh, production. And then um, I was really always drawn to, to directing from my days at BU. And um, a lot of people recommended script supervising to me as a way to learn about directing, to be on set, to sit right by the director and really be a part of the sort of inner workings of the set. So uh, I started on really small films. I was living in Los Angeles at the time and I worked on a bunch of Roger Corman films and all kinds of really, really small things and then just worked my way up to uh, ended up working on a bunch of features, um, The Devil Wears Prada, among other ones, and then worked in television. I worked on Sex and the City for years. And you worked um, also for Requiem for a Dream and yes. Sex and the City, and they're so different from each other. Yeah. So how did all of those experiences combined create your own directing style? Well, yeah, I mean, it was a great thing to be able to work with all those different directors on such different topics and different styles, and to, you know, and it really, made me realize that there are such different ways to tell stories and such different uh, viewpoints out there. And uh, it was great. I mean, I, I think that it, if anything, I, I learned to sort of just develop my own voice and, and go with my own instincts. But I know that I'm influenced by so many things. I mean, there's things I love that we did on The Devil Wears Prada and things I love that were done on Requiem for a Dream. So, you know, I think I took a little bit from everything. That's great. And so how did you emerge as a director? What was your first job as a director? Well, my first professional job was actually on Mad Men, which is a little bit crazy because <laughs> it's such an amazing place to start. But uh, I've been really trying to move into um, episodic directing for television for a long time. Um, and luckily, uh, Matthew Weiner, who's the creative, uh, creative producer, creator and executive producer, of Mad Men, he really believed in me and he had seen a short film that I did and really, you know, felt that I was ready and felt that I really understood his show and he gave me the shot. So it was season two of Mad Men, which was really a great place to start. Yeah. And so what do you look for in a script before you accept it and um, how do you apply your directing style to that script? Um, well, it's interesting because in television, you know, there's certainly a style for the show that you're doing. So you always want to honor that and then just bring, you know, your own taste and judgment sort of to that style. Um, luckily with Mad Men, it's very much my style too. I mean, the acting style, the shooting style, all of it is, is very much the way I, you know, represents the kind of shooting I love to do. So it's easy for me to direct that show, I think. It just fits my taste very well. And so Mad Men focuses um, on how it's a male-dominated world of advertising in the 60s, and then there's also very important female characters in the show. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to relate to that as a female director in a male-dominated role of directing? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that... Uh, yeah, it's strange that in 2012, you know, being a female director is still a very rare thing. I mean, oftentimes I go on to direct an episode of a show and I'm the only female director for that entire season. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's strange, but um, it's, uh, I think it's getting better and I think more and more women are directing and um, I think people are seeing that, you know, it's important to have women and that it's, you know, a different voice and a different perspective and a different way to tell a story sometimes and then sometimes it's not much different it kind of depends on the woman but um, I think that it's uh, it, it's slowly getting better but it definitely needs a little still needs to be pushed <laughs> and your latest project is the big C starring Laura Lenny can you yeah. tell us about that and <laughs> Uh, why you decided to direct it? Well, I actually directed a couple of, of the episodes last year, and uh, and I love the show. I mean, Laura's so incredibly talented, and um, and I love the mix of comedy and drama in the show, which, you know, it has a very different tone from Mad Men, but I mm -hmm. think it's... Um, 
it's just really interesting that they can take such an intense subject like cancer and find a way to make you laugh at it at times and make you laugh at how absurd the situations can be of dealing with something so profound and so heavy. And, and I, I like that. I think that um, I actually had a girl that I grew up with just email me the other day and say that she loves the big C and that her son had had cancer and luckily he now has uh, uh, gone through chemo and has is, is been uh, cancer free for the last year. But she said that that show made her feel so good because it made her laugh, at, it made her be able to laugh and it made her, you know, really, and then cry when it gets really sad. So, I mean, that made me feel really great to hear. The um, executive producer, Jenny Bix, on the show is a cancer survivor as well. And so, you know, I think that she's very sensitive to when and where you make jokes and when there's times to really, you know, deal with it in a more truthful, emotional way. Mm -hmm. And so we like to wrap up all of our one-on-one -on -one interviews with one final question, uh -oh. and it's probably the most important question. <clears throat> if you could give one piece of advice to BU <clears throat> students who are trying to enter the industry of film, what would that be? Uh, one piece of advice. Uh, just, I just say work really, really, really hard. I mean, that's kind of, I feel like, all you can do, and don't you know, go out there and concentrate on trying to be an overnight success or be some big, you know, have some big flash, you know, of a career. Because I don't think that those are the kinds that last. I mean, I think that film and, and television are, is an exciting career. And I think that you just have to work really hard and kind of learn as you go and enjoy the process of, of every, you know, everything you can be a part of. I mean, I loved working on Requiem for a Dream and the Dabble Wars Prada and all the projects that I worked on, even though I wasn't necessarily doing the position I wanted to do. But I had a great time and I learned a lot and I think it's made me a better filmmaker. That's excellent advice. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you for joining us today and good luck with your future endeavors. I'm sure you're going to be directing a lot more that we see. Um, so this wraps up this episode of BUTV 10's One on One. 